All right, so we're going to start by opening up Blender. And I'm using version, what version is this? It'll say in a second 2.78C. So you might want to get that one if you want to follow along. The first thing you're going to see when you start Blender is this screen that is the 3D screen. And it has this grid, and it's got a cube and a camera, and it's got a light. Now, I'm selecting by using my right mouse button. You should always use a mouse when you use Blender. You can do it without it by emulating the mouse. But um, that would mean going up to the the uh, user preferences and then you see emulate three button mouse continuous grab over here and then you can use your trackpad but it's a bit of a hassle using a mouse is a lot easier but when I right click I get the camera I can right click on the cube and I can right click on the light those are the three objects that are there to do our tutorial I'm going to eliminate the cube by pressing X and it says delete and the cube goes away I use the X button on the keyboard to do that. And now I've got a blank screen. I'm using the scroll wheel to go in and out. When I press the scroll wheel down, I can rotate the world. Okay, first thing we want to do for our tutorial on visualizing the food energy water nexus of the landscape is to add a mesh plane. And I add that mesh plane and it comes in very small on the grid. And then I hit the S key, and the S key is for scaling, and I can drag it out. Each time I hit the S key, I can drag out or shrink down the plane. And I want the plane to be about the size of the grid. So now it's about the size of the grid. And now that it's on the grid, and you can see as I move it around that it's on that grid, now I want to lock it in place. So I'm going to go to this plus sign and click on that, and you see the location. I'm going to lock that grid down. That way I won't accidentally move it. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to unwrap this plane. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to get an image to put on the plane. So bear with me as I launch this uh, browser and I go to maps.google.com. I'm going to take the image that I had and put it onto this plane, the image of where I'm working at Rosebud Continuum. And in order to do that, I am going to split the screen. So you see up here, actually, let me push this back in because we don't need this. Do you see these three uh, bars here in this triangle? That's the split screen. And I'm going to drag it over and I get two screens now. And I'm going to close this up so that it's easier to work with. This one down here you can see is the 3D view and this one also now has a 3D view but I want to use the UV image editor. Okay, That's going to let me put images onto whatever mesh I have and this mesh is easy because it's a plane and it's highlighted as you can see if I hit A I unhighlight it when I right click on it it gets highlighted with this orange line around it. If I hit A again, I can get the camera and the light highlighted as well. But I'm just going to right click on the plane and that's all I'm going to use. And now what I want to do with this is I want to go into the edit mode down here and it all turns orange. Uh, it was in object mode. Another way of getting into the edit mode is simply to hit the tab key. Tab key toggles into the edit mode. Tab key toggles out to the object mode. So I'm in the edit mode. And I'm going to go to this mesh, and I'm going to go UV Unwrap. And that takes that mesh and unwraps it. If it was a cylinder, or it was a cube, or it was a globe, it would unwrap it into a flat plane so you could put an image on it. Uh, here it already is a flat plane, so it's going to be fairly easy. And then I'm going to open an image of the landscape that I captured from Google maps and it's rosebud map they have here. Let's open that image and there it is. That's the map that I got from from Google and it's already highlighted there because I've highlighted the in edit mode I've highlighted this plane. 
Now what I want to do is I want to scale the highlighted area around the map. So I hit S and I can scale it up and down. I only want a square for this. The map, as you can see, was a rectangle while over here my area is a square. So what I'm going to do to make this a square is I'm going to hit S and then Y and I can scale in the Y axis. And that's pretty good. If I hit S and X, I can scale in and out this way. So I'm going to make it basically a square. And then it's in the wrong position, so then I hit the G key. That's the grab key. And then I can move that square over the area that I want to project onto my plane. So this looks like a pretty good projection, or I can make it smaller. Let's say I want to squeeze into just there and just hit G again and move that in. So I'm working with this area of the property. And but maybe it's fun to have the whole road. So let me hit S again and scale it up and G and then I can place it on the road. Okay, so that's our area that we're working with at Rosebud. Actually, you can see from the satellite view, there's our first of our three biodigesters already taken. There's the tennis court, uh, badminton court, and the basketball court. There's the house and the chicken coops back there. So I've got that. Now when I go over to this right side and I look, I can see that if I go to this viewport and go to texture. Now you can see the texture is mapped on. If I come over to the left here and grab and I move, you can see now what would be mapped onto the plane wherever I hover the box. So I'm going to put the box there. If I scale the box down, you can see I would get a zoom in to an area or I'd make it smaller. So once again, this is probably good for what I want to achieve. And that shows up here in edit mode in texture. Now if I go back to object mode, it's there. So that's just fine. Um, it looks like we've got our property where we can start to put our objects. And I can unselect that. The problem is if I then went to render it by hitting F12, it renders just as a blank plane. And if I look here in material mode, there's no material. So when I look at render mode, there's also nothing to render, even though I've mapped the texture on using the UV image mapping. All right, that's not a problem because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a material. So let's go into material mode here. And over here, you can see these buttons here. And that one there that looks like a circle is the materials layer button. And I'm going to create a new material. And it doesn't have to be anything. Just to know that I added, sometimes it's nice to click on a color and give it a color. Now you know, you can see that, in fact, yeah, I gave it a material. Then I'm going to go over to the texture button. Click on the texture button and give it a new texture. And that texture is going to be the very same image that I use. So I come down to image here and I go to open image and then let me go in my folder and find that map. And there we have it and open that image. And now you can see from over here that the texture is mapped onto it. And if I did material and plane, you'd see there's the plane right there. That would be if it was mapped onto a globe, if it was mapped onto a cube, if it was mapped onto a monkey face, if it was mapped onto hair, if it was mapped onto other objects. But we use the plane here. And there's a shine in it. And that shine doesn't look good. What is that shine from? Well, that shine is from this light bulb here. And you can see as I move it, what happens? The light shines on it. If I move the light down toward it and I move it up. That is a point light source, and I don't really want that. If I render it, you can see what the render would look like. If I hit F12, you'll see the entire render, except that the camera view is now, um, it's not, the camera's not set to the whole thing, but it's just ugly to have that shine. And I want to get rid of that. Let me go back into material. And to get rid of that shine, there's a couple things I must do. For one thing, I don't need anymore to have the UV window open here, so I'm going to close it. And the way I close it is I go back to my drag bars up here, those three triangular lines, and I drag, oops, shouldn't have done that. 
what I do is uh, go to these three lines. No, nope, not them. Go to these lines again. And uh, this is one of those things that causes a little bit of problem from time to time. It's uh, Yeah, see, this is a, you may find similar problems here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to not drag it out. Ah, well, this is going to go in the opposite direction. What happens is you grab on it and you can go over and then an arrow appears over here that says drag this window over to that window. But that's not what I want to do. I actually wanted to go the other way. Um, not a big deal. I can turn this into 3D view if I want to. There we are. So that's something you'll have to practice and get used to how if you have different views here like this and you want to collapse them, what do you do? Which way do you turn them. This will go that way. You want to go that way. Ah, oh, you just start to pull it back and forth. That's all you do. Sorry about that. It gets a little confusing sometimes, but I want it to go that way. Once again, let's look at that. Here's your grab lines. You can drag it out. In fact, you can drag down many different views if you want to. You're dragging these out. And then when you want to have one view that you can see from this angle and another one that you want to look at from the top down and you want to have another one around like this and so you have all these and you can mess around. You can have a view that has the UV uh, editor like that. You can do all that kind of stuff. But when you want to collapse them, then you inevitably have the same problem. I guess you have to go to the one that's adjacent and then you can flip it. That's what it is. So you can go to the one that is adjacent, pull it into where you want to go. I guess I have to collapse this to do that. So I wouldn't use this one up here. I would use this one here because I can go up or down. So I can pull that down. Now I would not try to use these grab lines here to go over that way. I would grab here, then go right, then go left. And then boom, we're back. All right. Gives you a sense if you have trouble. Yes, I have trouble too sometimes. Anyway, that light is still there, and what I want to do then is I want to make sure I select the light bulb. So there's the camera, there's the light, and there's the plane. I select the light bulb with the right button, the mouse click, and then I go to lamp, which is here. So that was texture, this is lamp over here. And I change it from a point to the sun, it seems to look good, until I move it down, looking down from the sun, and then that shine becomes obvious. So I don't want all that shine. What I want to do is get rid of specular. So here's that shine. See this toggled specular button? If I uncheck that, specular goes away. And now I've got the sun lighting the area, which will give me shadows when I want to plant my objects, but I don't have any more the problem of shine. So let's go ahead and save this. Save it as we will call this rosebud object test and save it as a blender file. All right, so there we have it, rosebud object test dot blend. All right, so now that we've got that, we want to import an object. Now I have downloaded already an object from 3D Warehouse, Google 3D Warehouse, SketchUp Warehouse, and I'm gonna import that by going to import and then import Collada, because that's the file that I download. I have a bunch of these in here. <clears throat> the one I'm going to import is a solar panel, and there's a single solar panel. I will import my single solar panel, and it comes in all highlighted and messy with all these different parts and objects to it. Now, this is a messy way to work with it. There's too many parts to this very complex solar panel, and if I start breaking it apart, I'm going to be in trouble. So what I'm going to do is move it onto another layer. These are the layer buttons here that I'm indicating with the mouse, 
and it's on layer one. There's another empty layer here, layer two. Since this is highlighted, I just hit the M key and then move it over to the layer I want to move it on. It disappears from that layer and it is in that layer there, layer two. There's layer one and here's layer two. Now, because I may want to work with animating the solar panel at some point with all its myriad parts, I'm going to duplicate it at Shift D. That made a copy. And I'm going to move that, since it's highlighted, to layer three. And now I'm going to go to layer three over here. And that's my duplicate that I can mess around with all I want. And I'm going to now hit Control J. And that joins all those parts into one object. The problem is it now got super, super big. And I'm going to make it small again because the world, the, uh, the actual mesh that we had is so small now you can't even see it. It's somewhere in here. There it is. That's my, see there's my grid oh, with this giant solar panel. So I've got to bring it considerably down in size. One way I could do that is just by hitting the S key and then shrinking it in. You can keep doing that and doing that. Another is to hit this plus sign here and then go to scale. And I found that 0.004 kind of works. So let me try that again. Scale 0.004. It's not letting me. Well, there it does if I do that, doesn't it? Point, ah, because number lock is not, okay, point zero zero four, that gets really warpy. Then do the other one, point zero zero four in the Y dimension, and point zero zero four in the X. And now I've got a solar panel that's a little bit more reasonable. Obviously, it isn't sitting quite right. It's all pivots, so to speak. I'm hitting the one key to get that view, the three key to get that view, the seven key to get the overhead view. Let's start with the three key looking at the right perspective. I hit the five key to get orthogonal. I hit five again. It says perspective. I hit the five key to get orthogonal. And now let me hit R to rotate and let's rotate it a bit and move it up just a bit so it sits on what would be the plane. Let me try this view here. Let me bring it toward the center and all these, by the way, these little uh, sprite-like things, you should be able to get rid of now without damaging the model. Let's see, I use the B for bounding box, and then I hit delete. Yeah, and they go away, but the solar panel's still there. All right, so there's the solar panel. So the one key gives me this look, the three key gives me this one. Shift and drag, seven is looking over. It's not actually sitting right. I hit the R key again and I can rotate it. Um, so that's the solar panel and that isn't exactly how a solar panel would sit, is it? So let me see again. So this is using the one key orthogonal. This is perspective. Five key makes you go from orthogonal perspective. Let me hit R again and rotate it down so that the panels are sitting the way they would on the ground. There they are. So now it's ready to go back to, to layer one it's here in layer three, so I hit the M key and click on layer one. It disappears from layer three, and I go to layer one. There it is. Now it's still way too big. If you had solar panels that big, boy, you'd be able to run the whole neighborhood. So I want to put these solar panels down in the area where we have our uh, our garden now. So I hit the seven key I can move it this is where it's gonna go no not there it's gonna go hit G and move it around it's gonna go somewhere down here and then hit R and rotate it so it's gonna go like this and I can zoom in let's see so now it's in the right place but it's way too big still so I will scale it from here hitting S and keep dropping it down. See the shadow that the sun casts on it, which is pretty cool. So I know I can hit it on the ground when I put it down like that. That's still way too big. I wish I had solar panels that big. Something like, whoops, there it is. 
something like that might work and sink it down onto the floor there by the fence line which you can see <clears throat> so you can play around with sizes all you want but that's um that's a fun way to get the solar panel in and there they are and as you can see the sun is creating a shadow now that's sort of fun to play with if you can find the uh, find the sun here and you move the sun around the shadows eventually should update as you can see here so let me move the sun directly over let me rotate the sun this way and now you can see that the shadow is falling this is the south of the property let me move it up like that you can see the shadow falling and as i move the sun in its arc i move it down and rotate it like this at the early morning the shadow is going to fall over there on this side and at as we move around this is we'd have to do the animation with this but if we move the sun over to the afternoon and rotate the angle then you can see the shadow there so the shadows can be manipulated and you can get a good sense if you animate the sun properly of how the shadows are going to fall and where they're going to fall, which is a nice planning tool. All right. Now, in terms of rendering something like this, what you do is you set the camera, and if we hit the zero key, you see what the camera already sees. It's facing in the wrong direction for me. This is where it becomes useful to, let me go back here, this is where it becomes useful to split the screen up. So if I bring down a screen like this, and I bring a screen over like this, and I bring a screen over like this, then I can make this one would be set to 1, which is the front ortho, which is kind of like that. This one down here can be the 3 key, which is the side, as you can see. I can have a top down hitting seven, looking right down like that. And then I can have my user perspective here. And if I want the camera to be facing the right way with this, which is looking from the south, then I can grab my camera, move it over with G, rotate it with R. Let's see. I can rotate it RZ in the Z direction, so it's now facing a different way move it back. Let's use this window here to see what the camera sees by hitting zero. That's what the camera sees now. Then I can hit G and I can focus that camera a little better like that. And then when I hit F12 for render, then we see the rendering of the solar panel. And that's how we can begin to place objects into this. You have this ability to manipulate the screens all you want to. We might as well just have some fun for a second and show the animation feature of animating the sun to see that shadow move. And the way that we would do that is we would come in here and there's the sun. And the sun is supposed to travel from the east, which is over here. When you hit R, you turn the angle of the sun. And the sun would start in the morning down like this, and it would rise up. So I'll move it down like this. So it's all dark, as you can see here in the morning. This is still rendered, so we hit escape now you can see. Okay. So we have the sun starting out here, and what I'm going to do down here is the timeline. So with the timeline, what I'm going to do is I've selected the sun, so I'm going to hit 
I and I'm going to say rotation and location which is location rotation which is here and I set a keyframe so that green line turns slightly yellow you see a yellow line there saying I've set the keyframe after about 30 frames assuming that's a second you can set your time however you like I'm going to move it up to midday and again I want to make sure yes it seems to be in the right position here and I'm going to hit I'm going to change the R hit R and change the Sun so it's going straight down looking in this direction but it's on a slight angle here although it seems like the Sun would be better off there and then use the R key so it's falling right on the solar panel and that isn't quite midday that's why you have to move around a little bit and set it okay so now it's going right through the panel that's midday and I will hit I again and go location rotation I don't need these other windows actually so remember I can click on the three lines and go either up or down I'm going to go down like that and I probably can do the whole thing um, with just two windows so that's what the camera sees all right now I'm going to go 30 more frames and go to 60 and I'm going to move the Sun over here but I'm also going to move it down and I'm going to rotate the angle of the Sun's rays again to a nighttime low and I'm going to hit I location rotation so now what happens is I move through these keyframes is that the Sun goes over and down and it sets but you can see the long shadows that it creates and the shadows move throughout the day and if I zoom in my camera angle should actually be let's find that camera there's the camera the camera should zoom in a little bit more and I think I'll just move that camera in a couple different ways let me move down to here all right maybe I tilt the camera up by rotating it in the in the uh, let's try rotation in the y-axis and rx gives me rotation in the x-axis hit G to get it there we have a better look at it and now so when I play the animation you can see that in the morning it's dark and the shadow is falling there and then at night it comes down sets in the west and the shadow grows that way so we can hit play on this animation here and it will play through the animation also to loop it you'd have to set the end of the frame to uh, what do we have it we have the last frame at 120 basically it's the light that's moving actually so to see the keyframes there we go 60 so 60 was the end frame so we go end at 60 and then when I play it it'll loop or rather it'll just keep going back it'll just keep playing over and over so then you can start populating with all sorts of other objects and let me pause this to populate with other objects it's the same procedure I go to file I go to import I go to Collada I already have several models that I've put down for example a 55 gallon drum I have here and there it is it's come in rather large once again, I move it by hitting M, move it on to a different layer, go to that layer, see if that's what I want to have, hit Control J to join it. It's got some weird artifact way out there, whatever that artifact coming off that red, that orange line is, which we don't necessarily want. So, The control J doesn't seem to be working. 
remember that object, that line, I'm going to try to delete it. There we go. So now I just have that. Seems like there was a lid associated with it. That's what it was, a lid that uh, came off of it. And the reason it's so dark is because we don't have any lights in this scene. And um, we're looking at it under material. So let's just look at it as a solid. And then we can see how the lid goes. The lid, if you want the lid to be able to move, be moved on and off, then you don't want to join the lid. So you don't, we want to keep it separate. So what you can do is you can group these and object, and you can say group, create new group. And now it's a group. And that group has a name. It'll be called barrel. And you see it turned green there. And that means that I can move the whole group by selecting the group barrel. But let me select the whole thing by using A. Now it all comes up. It's all in green here. There is another point there for some reason that needs to be deleted. Okay, it's not part of our group. So I have that. I hit M now. I move it to my first layer. I go to my first layer. And you can see the barrel now. And if I want to put the barrel by the solar panels, they're way too big. By the way, the reason this is green now is because I'm looking just at the material. So I can put it back onto there. I was on solid. So I go back to material. I can see the material. And I want this to be sitting next to the solar panel. So I hit S and I shrink it down. And now I move it. Hitting Z puts me in the top mode. I move my barrel next to the solar panels. And it's a bit big for the barrel, so let's make the barrel a little bit smaller. There we go. Note now that the lid can still come off and be placed. But if I wanted to select, I could go to Select, and I could say Select Grouped and select right and you'll see them here there's names of the groups for example this group here is the solar panels i'm going to name them now solar panel and then this is lid, so I can name this lid, and then I can name this one here, which is the barrel itself. I can name that barrel. Uh, and when I do my rendering now, by hitting F12, you see the barrel is sitting by the solar panels on the property. And you can keep building out from there. Anyway, that's the basic tutorial for now. And uh, hope that uh, it was clear. If you have any questions, go ahead and write. Thanks.